So here at the Bearded IT Dad, we're all about giving you advice and insight to grow your career in the IT field. Well, our guest today is all about that, but for cybersecurity. He's the founder of the company called Cyber, which is not only an amazing online e-learning platform for cybersecurity, it's also a community of like-minded people with one goal in mind, try to help each other advance and grow their career in cybersecurity. So in today's video, we're gonna be covering some of the tips and tricks you need to know to start a career in cybersecurity. And today, we're doing another giveaway for our holiday training giveaway. Yes, in this video, we're gonna be giving away some epic prizes from cyber. So make sure and stay tuned until the end. Welcome, why don't you take a, a few minutes to introduce yourself to the audience, who you are, what you do, and uh, tell us a little bit more about cyber. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for for having me on this show. And I'm really excited to talk about what we do because I, I love what we do. So my name is Christoph Limplair, and I founded a company called CyberCYBR.com. And we're basically a training community and platform. So and anytime you want to learn something related to cybersecurity, you can go to our platform, you can go to our Discord community, you can meet other like-minded individuals who are also interested in cybersecurity or IT in general. Uh, you can even talk to people who are potentially hiring, right? We've had a, a couple of members this year alone, actually, who have ended up finding people who were hiring through the community and, and getting jobs that way. So really, the goal is to try and, and educate people on different cybersecurity topics. And of course, we'll talk a little bit more, more about that as we go through this uh, this conversation, but also to provide a, a safe community where you can go in and you can ask any question that you want to ask. Because I've been part of some of some other communities over the years as I was trying to learn that might have been a little bit more hostile. And so that always kind of stunted my my ability to learn and grow. And so one of our goals with the cyber community was to make it accessible and open to anybody, regardless of what the question is. And uh, and I think we, we've done a, a pretty decent job of that so far. So uh, really proud of what we've been able to to accomplish through cyber. That's a huge thing. You know, um, in the majority of IT, I found a lot of people really open and willing to help. But sometimes you'll come across some of those communities that, um, you know, they feel like a little bit more elite or advanced. And, yeah. you know, if you're just starting out, they're not always welcoming to kind of give up their industry secrets, which I feel is, is it's so horrible to do because, you know, we're all in this together. It's not like we're competing against each other. Um, you know, there's tons of thousands of jobs out there. And sometimes people just need people to talk to and bounce ideas off of or ask those simple questions when you're starting out because you don't know um me being very much a self-taught person i've i've really taught myself everything i know along in this industry and now i'm a director of network operations you know um and i didn't get there just by trying to google all my answers though there was a lot of that going on no, for sure um you know there you know there's um the tech community has always been very open and helpful to help people grow. So I think that's really awesome that you guys have uh, such a great resource to help um, other people just kind of ask those questions, you know, if they don't know the answers or, you know, it's, it's just a great community. And I was going to say to, to that note, if you don't mind me jumping in two two great examples of that, that I, I always pull up are the first one when I was learning how to use Kali Linux, just Google any question related to Kali right now. And I can almost guarantee that one of the answers is if you're asking this question, you should not be using Kali Linux. And look, in some cases, that may be true, right? If it's a simple like, how do I change the password? Probably shouldn't be using Kali. But if it's if it's if it's trying to figure out how to fix a networking issue or the packages aren't downloading because some update screwed up the system, whatever it is like that kind of response is just not helpful at all. And every time I kept seeing that response, I'm like, well, how am I supposed to get to the level of where I can use this, this operating system if I can't get any help learning it? So that was the first, the first bell in my head that's like, we need a friendly community that can teach this stuff. The second one was, I was working on one of my first courses I launched at Cyber, which is an application security course. And I was telling a friend of mine because she was asking me like, hey, what... I'm not from a development background. Like she, she wasn't from a development background. I am, but she wasn't. And so she said, if I'm not from a development background, can I still take this course and understand what's going on? And as I was building it, I was like, well, honestly, you probably do need a little bit of background in developing applications because otherwise you may not understand some of the stuff I'm talking about. And so she like, there was a moment of, of silence and she goes, well, how am I supposed to learn how to develop secure applications if I'm supposed to learn how to develop applications before I can learn how to secure applications? 
And I was like, wait a minute. You're right. That's a great, excellent yeah. point. I'm thinking about this backwards. Most of us are thinking about this backwards. So you should not, it's, it's a cat and mouse game and you should not create a hostile environment to where if somebody tries to ask a question where they're learning how to develop or develop secure applications that they can't get the answers they need because they need that prerequisite knowledge. So, you know, it's just, it's these interesting questions that come up as you think about how do I effectively train on how to build stuff, but also how to properly secure it. And so that, that's really where all of these ideas for, for building a, a friendly community came about. So just had to share that. Oh, absolutely. And I appreciate that. And it, it is so true. I mean, you know, a lot of times we think, you know, well, you need to know this, this, this before you can learn this. But that's not always the case for everyone. And, um, you know, that's really great that you guys have really, you know, thought about that side of it, because I think it often gets overlooked. You know, a lot of people getting into cybersecurity, you know, um, you know, they either feel like they need to know certain things before they can start mm -hmm. or they've been like told this like repeatedly. But you know, how are you supposed to learn how to secure the network, you know, um, if you don't, you know, know the network and stuff like that. But, you know, it shouldn't be that way. It should be inclusive. You know, if someone's really passionate about cybersecurity, we should nurture that and let them follow that. And once they learn how to, you know, protect the network, you know, that's the one of the most important things they can do, you know, and so on. That was really leading up to my first question is really, how did you get your start? Why did you decide to start um, cyber? And, you know, you kind of already answered that where you want to build a, a great safe community, but, you know, it's kind of walk me through how, how you got started. Yeah, absolutely. So I, my background is actually more heavy in web development. So that's that's really kind of how I got started in IT in general. I just, I had moved. So I'm originally from France, right? I was born and raised in France. And we moved to the United States when I was fairly young. And I was a very shy and introverted kid. So I did not make friends very easily. I was, I was a loner. I was alone a lot of times. And I just kind of turned to computers because I could meet I could meet and make friends online a lot easier than in person. It just came more naturally to me. And through the course of doing that, I just kind of learned how to build websites for friends or for, for gaming communities. Cause I was really a big gamer at the time too, like with Starcraft one and, and call of duty one and, and stuff like that. And so we would have these clans and we, we would develop websites for clans. And then a lot of times the clans would be very hostile towards each other. We're just talking about hostility, but they, they would fight a lot in the games, but also outside of the games. And so a couple of times the websites that I would build would get compromised. And so I would like, I would try to figure out how they did it. How did they get into our database? How did they, how did they get into the admin panel? And how did they completely own our website and then, you know, put a lot of, of profanity on there and stuff like that. And so that's when I started getting curious about application security topics, like how does how does SQL injection works? How does cross-site scripting work and, and things like that? And that's how in the course of doing that, I started to, to learn how to build more secure web applications. So that was really how I got started in in uh, in IT and development, I did not necessarily go through school to to get started. Although I did end up going to, to college and getting a, a bachelor's in in um, computer information systems, so I did also do that. But to be honest with you, I don't feel like that contributed a whole lot to my knowledge because I already knew a lot of stuff by just being self taught, which is how a lot of people in this industry end up learning anyway. And so as I was doing that, I started to hear more and more about the cloud, AWS in specific, in, in particular. And so I wanted to, to learn how to use the cloud because I like I knew back end development, but oftentimes I would just go to some hosting provider and then upload the files on the hosting provider. And I knew how to use FTP or SSH into it. But that was about it. I, I didn't really understand system administration or how it worked behind the scenes beyond that. And so I really wanted to learn more about the cloud. I started just diving deeper into learning Amazon Web Services as much as I could. And then that led me to joining a company called Linux Academy. And I don't know if, if your listeners have heard of Linux Academy before or not, but it was a, a pretty popular platform. And so when I joined Linux Academy, we were really, really tiny, fewer than 10 employees. And it was a growing business. It was doing well, but we were pretty small. And uh, fast forward to about four years later, we had grown it to over 200 employees. We had a ton of different courses that span from Linux, DevOps, AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, things like that, system administration in general. And then we were acquired and merged with another company called A Cloud Guru. 
Uh, I didn't stay very long after that. Uh, I decided that the culture just wasn't really for me anymore after the acquisition. And so I was sitting there and, and doing house chores and just trying to catch up on spending time with family and stuff like that. But honestly, like unless I have some professional goals to work towards, I just end up getting pretty bored I, and I don't feel fulfilled. I don't feel the happiest. And so I was trying to think of, of what to do next. And one of the things that dawned on me was that even though we were training on Linux and cloud and a lot of these other topics, we never really focused on security at either Linux Academy or a cloud guru. And in fact, a lot of our customers, especially enterprise customers, would use completely different training providers for security content because that they just didn't see, see us as, as being as providing that kind of, of training material. And so then on top of that, I would see a lot of these companies getting hacked. And a lot of times it was because of cloud misconfigurations. It was just very basic mistakes that were happening, but at large scale, they can be relatively easy to do. And so I'm sitting there, I'm thinking about that. Then COVID hits and everybody's freaking out because they're trying to figure out how to have their employees work from home and, and not introduce serious issues to, to their security hygiene. And so uh, I'm sitting there thinking about all these different factors. And then it dawned on me, like, why don't I try to, to create some helpful training material through a company and just do what I already know to do, which is build good training material, and then just kind of see where that goes. And so that's where I really started to, to, to think about cyber and, and launching cyber. And so we launched it, I believe, in June of 2020, so a couple of years ago. And then fast forward to today, we have about 60,000 learners. We have that growing Discord community where anybody can just join. It's completely free of charge. And we're just trying to, to, to build that friendly environment. Uh, we have about 10 different courses at the moment. We have some, well, we have a course on application security, like a, an introduction to application security. We have some ethical hacking content. So we have some courses on SQL injections, like a SQL injection deep dive and using a, a tool called SQL map to help find some of those vulnerabilities. We have a cross-site scripting deep dive and again, using tools and, and using manual approaches to find cross-site scripting issues in your own applications, and then to learn how to also defend against those cross-site scripting attacks. So not just the offense, but also the defense. We have some networking fundamentals topics. Uh, we have OS command injection attacks. And then more recently, I'm, I've been working in, and I'm finishing up a course on the CompTIA Security Plus certification exam. So it can help you from start to finish, prepare for the Security Plus certification exam, and then go take the exam and, and hopefully pass it the first time. Okay, guys, time for another giveaway. Away. So in today's giveaway, we're actually giving away five of Cyber's Networking Fundamental courses. And to one person, we're going to give them one year access to their complete online e-learning platform. So if you guys are interested in signing up for the giveaway, I want you to actually go down to the description and tell me what is your IT career goals and put hashtag cyber at the end. So I know that you're interested in signing up for the giveaway and we'll pick the winner a week from today. Okay, now back to the video. That, that's amazing um and your story on how you started i can i can almost guarantee you that so many people out there can kind of relate to that yeah. um it's, it's so similar to me you know with growing up i was kind of a an introvert myself and i always found it easier to talk to people and stuff on the computer or you know do things online um you know, i remember growing up going through high school and i'd just be locked in my room at my computer for hours doing yeah. you know learning things and trying to figure out how to do stuff and Myself, I just got started kind of unofficially in the tech industry with, you know, I've started up my own kind of website business, you know, because I was in a four wheel drive club and uh, they needed someone to do their website. I'm like, well, I remember learning some HTML back in high school, so I can do that. And they're like, oh, that's great. You should do a business. I got someone else that's interested. So I started a business and then, you know, I had a website that got compromised and I wanted to I'm like, OK, how did they get into my site? Like I did everything by the book. You know, and yeah, I mean, I think so many people can kind of relate to that story. So that's so great. Um, and, you know, let's transition into my next question, which is, you know, if for someone who knows they want to be like they want to start a career in cybersecurity, like probably with little to no experience in IT, what do you recommend them to start out with? Like, what are those first important skills you should learn if you want to actually create a professional career based around cybersecurity? That's a great question. And I would actually, I'm going to answer a little bit differently than I think you probably get answers to, to that question. And the reason I say that is because I don't necessarily think that two, two different, two different answers. One answer is you can just start trying stuff out. So 
I wouldn't necessarily say like, oh, you have to learn this right off the bat and then you have to go do this and do that and do that and then you're good. Because the fact of the matter is like a lot of times networking gets recommended as the first thing to start because networking is so incredibly important. But personally, I've never enjoyed learning about, about networking, period. It's just every time I learn about networking, I just kind of find it boring and it's not that interesting. And yes, it is an important skill to have, but it's not my passion. It's not my interest. And so if you told me, go start learning networking right now, I probably would have switched careers because I would have gone, this is not for me. This is not that interesting to me. I don't want to do this, this as a career. And maybe I would have missed that opportunity. So instead, I think that's where a lot of people get lost yeah. too, is, you know, is, you know, everyone says, well, if you want to learn cybersecurity, you need to learn networking, you need to learn IT fundamentals and they go study that and they get burnt out because they're like, oh, this yes. isn't that interesting. I don't want to do this. I want to go like hone this computer. I want to learn how to hack this website. And they, the, this not because they're being forced to learn something that's not interesting to them. So, exactly. Sorry to interrupt, but yeah. No, no, that's that's a very valid point. And look, I understand that you need to learn how to walk before you can run. That's very valid. You absolutely. There are some things you need to learn before you try to own a machine. That's just that's yeah. a matter of fact. But at the same time, I, I I don't like throwing somebody into networking unless they just are naturally interested into networking. So tip number one is just try different stuff out. Maybe you like web development better than you like networking, or maybe you, you would just enjoy working in the cloud and, and doing stuff like that. So experimenting all around will give you a better idea of what you're interested in and not interested in. But typically my, my first answer to that question is actually don't necessarily just start diving into courses, learning new skills, but instead try to find a community that you can join because then you can ask those questions and then different people can come in with different perspectives and kind of mentor, mentor you through that. So a lot of times we'll have somebody join in to our community. And one of the first questions I'll ask is, what are you interested in doing? Why are you here? Right. And they'll say, oh, it's because I, I want to be a, a, a pen tester. I want to be an ethical hacker. It's like, okay, great. What's your background look like? And they'll tell me and I'll say, okay, great. Now we can start to look at an actual roadmap for what that looks like. And by the way, I know you think you want to be a pen tester, but maybe you don't. Let's talk about that a little bit more. Pen testing can be very fun. It's also a lot of paperwork. It's a lot of writing. It's a lot of communicating to, to potentially non-technical audiences. And you may not like that at all. You may actually hate that job. So let's talk about that a little bit more, right? <laughs> yeah, and ab so absolutely. Yeah, because everyone thinks, you know, when they hear pen testing, they think of the sexy job where you're you're putting on the <laughs> ski mask and breaking into buildings and you know going all Mr. Robot. And it's it's not like that at all. I can tell you. Uh, I mean, I've never worked as a pen tester, but I have people I know that are pen testers, and the amount of pay it's it's like. 10% of penetration testing and like 90% of writing reports to people who don't understand at all what you're doing. Absolutely. And so that brings me to my next point that, that I wanted to make because one of our community members, his name is Eric, and I actually interviewed him on the podcast because he ended up getting a pen test job and he absolutely loves it. It's a great fit for him. So I'm glad that worked out. But when he first joined the community, him and I had a phone call because I could just tell that he was very confused and very lost. And so let's unpack that a little bit more because it's very relevant to this. He followed that advice of just go, 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 go. You need to learn all these different things. Learn networking inside and out. Learn web application attack. Learn, learn SQL injections. Learn cross-site scripting. Learn all these different things. And he was so overwhelmed because he's like, how am I supposed to learn all this stuff? Like people spend decades learning all of these topics and they're still not experts in any one of those particular topics necessarily, right? It just, there is so much to learn in this industry. You can't possibly learn all the things that Twitter tells you to learn or that some of these online tutorials and videos tell you to learn. And so then you look at that and you go, I'm never going to be good enough. There's no way I can do this. And then you, you burn out or you give up. And so by joining, like, I'm not trying to make this sound as an ad for my community. There's many other communities that you can join as well, right? So please don't take this as an ad for, for yeah. cyber community no, necessarily. Absolutely. But by joining that type of community, you can have people come in and say, dude, you're going to burn out. You're, you're trying to do way too much. You're trying to learn way too much. And you don't need to know all these things to land a high paying job. So instead, let's just figure out where you need to start. So long winded answer to your, to your question. 
I would not necessarily recommend a specific topic or a specific course. I would instead recommend you join a community and you ask those questions and say, look, I don't know where to start. Somebody please guide me. Here are my interests and here's what I'm trying to achieve. That's, that's so, I mean, you're, you're, you're like saying everything like just spot yeah. on. I can't, uh, it, it, I, I, I hear, I, <clears throat> I hear so many people say, okay, you got to go get this certification, this certification, this certification. Okay. And then you can go get this entry level job. That's only going to pay you like $40,000 a year. And you got to yeah. go do that for five years. And then you can like, and no, that is not the case. I mean, I, I I'm a perfect example. Um, and I, I'd like to tell the story cause I'm hoping to inspire people. You know, when I got into the IT field, I was, I worked production all my life. Um, literally my last job before I got into IT was a bulldozer operator. The, the furthest thing you can get from any sort of IT position. And I decided one day, you know what? This isn't for me. I, I always liked tech. I always like computers. I can no longer do these mind numbing jobs to just put food on the table. I want to enjoy what I do. And I decided to, you know, com to completely pivot my career and go into networking. Because back in high school, I remember, and I took actually a CCNA course long long ago i mean wireless n was coming out and my instructor was telling me it would never catch on <laughs> i mean <laughs> so but i i enjoyed it i enjoyed networking so i like that's what i want to do so with no skills no experience no college education i just went out and started putting myself out there and applying for jobs and long and behold i got a job mm -hmm. and fast forward three years into my career um i you know i worked two years as a it support specialist and when I started there, I was on the help desk doing basic stuff. By the time I left, I was designing the complete IT infrastructure for brand new hotels we were building and wow. deploying. Um, and then th with three years into my career, I landed a job working in a NOC as a NOC technician. And then 90 days into my job, I'm going in for my 90 day review. This is where they're going to decide they're going to keep me or fire, you know, keep me or fire me. My boss says, you have done everything above and beyond. You know, I hired you. I wasn't sure because you really never had a true background and experience. You don't have any certifications and your desire to learn and go above and beyond is so amazing. We're going to promote you to director of network operations. Mm -hmm. And keep in mind, this is like everything I've learned is I've been self-taught just because I've been passionate about learning. And it's completely possible to do that. Now I'm two, over two years into that position and still loving it and learning. Um, so, you know, I, I think there's a lot of noise out there that tells people you got to learn all these skills uh, to be successful and make a lot of money. But you don't. Um, you just have to have kind of the right mindset and the desire to chase what you're passionate about. And I just think that's so great that you are building a community that really nurtures that. It, it's so, so important that you, you have to have that because otherwise you're just going to get so lost and so confused and, and overwhelmed with everything that you have to learn. So yeah, it's uh, it, to me, it's a critical component. Absolutely. What is your next advice for, okay, people who are looking to start applying for those jobs? How do, and you know, they're just starting to mar get there. How do they market themselves to step out of their comfort zone and try to actually start going and getting a job and building that initial experience? Do you have any advice for people um, along those lines? I do. And I'm glad you asked that question because uh, honestly, most of the time when I see people struggling to get jobs, it's not because they, they don't have the correct skill set. Like I have members who have been part of the community that I've talked to that I'm just like, wow, I'm blown away by how smart they are and how good they are at what they've learned and what they've done, but they struggle to find jobs. So it's not because they don't have the abilities or the skills. Like I, I might see some other people getting hired that I know can't do as good of a job. And it's like, well, why did they get the position and you didn't get the position? That just doesn't make sense. So a lot of times it's not about the skills. It's more so about their ability to market themselves. And one of the issues there is, just like I was talking about earlier, I think a lot of, of people who are in this, in this industry are similar in that way, which is that they may not be, they're probably not extroverted and they may be hesitant to reach out and to talk to people. But unfortunately, a lot of cases, landing a job requires doing a little bit of that. So what I would recommend is as you're learning things, even if you just literally just started learning and you feel like you're going to, to look like an idiot for lack of a better term, just because you're like, I don't know anything. I'm going to look so dumb posting this stuff online. 
It doesn't matter. That's not the point. The point is that as you're learning stuff, publicize that. Go on social media. Talk about, oh, today I learned what a subnet is and, and how that works. Or today I learned how to launch a cloud instance and, and here's what I ended up launching. Post blog posts about it, even if it's a tiny little blog that you're, you're just setting up on your own side. Just talk about what you're learning because the more that shows up on people's radars, the more likely you are to come across somebody's eyeballs who's a hiring manager. And then they'll look at where you're learning and they're going to be impressed that you're learning all these things in a short amount of time. Or, or maybe they, they see a skill that you just developed and they're like, I need this person, right? I need somebody that knows how to do this. And, and that's exactly the type of person I need in my organization. Let me just reach out to them. So that would be tip number one. Tip number two is just network. Talk to people, reach out to people, message them, right? I'm not necessarily talking about hopping on the phone and, or, or going to meetups, although that could be an excellent thing to do, or even conferences. Those are great ways to, to meet people who are hiring, but also maybe reach out to them, reach out to them in a, in a community or reach out to them on LinkedIn or on Twitter and just send them a message. Don't spam them, right? But maybe say something like, hey, I saw that you're hiring for this position. I've been spending the last six to 12 months learning the skills that I think are, are going to be very beneficial to your organization. And here's why I think that, or here's what I've built to showcase that. And then maybe they don't respond, but maybe they, they grab that message you sent them or that email that you sent them. And maybe they send that to the person that's, that's sifting through applicants. And maybe that gets you a leg up because it's coming straight from the hiring manager. So don't necessarily just submit your application through a portal that goes into a void and then that never makes it through, but actually try to reach out and, and say, Hey, I'm very interested in this job. And here's why I'm interested in this job. I really want to work for this company or I really want to work for you because I've seen you do this or that. I've seen you give you this, give this, talk and it changed my life or like, don't make things up. Right. But I'm just giving some examples of, of things that you can do that honestly will set you apart that take five minutes to do in a lot of cases, but most candidates are not doing those things. And so if you do those things, it will help you stand out. Um, I can try to think of some other, some other tips and examples, <laughs> but honestly, just those things alone can give you a huge advantage over people who are just blasting out resumes and applying to hundreds of different positions and, and hoping that something sticks. That is absolutely perfect. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's so true. Absolutely. I want to circle back to kind of, you know, cyber and also, you know, different learning techniques. Um, you know, what advice do you have for people, you know, starting to study uh, for these different skills and stuff? You know, is there, you know, different learning techniques you recommend, you know, um, labs, practice exams, eBooks, what do you recommend, you know, is the best way to really retain some of this knowledge that people are trying to learn in, for these important jobs? Application, applying, 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 and, and hands-on, just like you said, absolutely. I'm, I'm a big proponent of that because again, if, if you're familiar with Linux Academy, if you're listening and, and you use that platform before, our big thing was hands-on labs learn by doing, deploy environments, jump into those environments and actually build that out. The same applies to cybersecurity or really any other t IT topic, in my opinion. I know some stuff's gonna be conceptual and that's hard to apply. And some of that you do have to memorize or learn or whatever. But anytime that you can actually take what you're learning in a course or an ebook or, or blog post, take that and try to apply it in a way. Build your own home lab, use cloud instances if, if that's, more economical for you, or if that's easier for you, or if that's what you want to do instead, but deploy some, some type of environment and actually apply what we're doing in the lessons themselves, right? Like if we're learning SQL injections in my SQL injection courses, I'll show you an actual environment that you can launch attacks against. And it's ethical because they're not live targets, which you should never be doing anyway when you're first learning or into or without permissions. But there, there are these lab environments that can help you get your feet wet. And yes, they're a little bit easier than, than what you could see in the real world, but they help you build those skills. They help you build that mental model of here's how I can look for these types of vulnerabilities. And then after the fact, once you feel more comfortable, you can then look at bug bounty programs and you can sign up for those open bug bounty programs and you can try to attack those targets with permission. 
And then if you start finding vulnerabilities through that, then you might get invited to private bug bounty programs where you have fewer eyeballs there. You can learn different techniques. You can start to throw other, other attacks into the mix and then just keep going from there. And then once you've got that, you can even add that on your resume and say, Hey, look, I've found X, Y, Z issues on these bug bounty programs. And here's how, here's how I found them and, and stuff like that. And again, going back to, to sharing that on social media, you could say, Hey, look, I found this cross-site scripting vulnerability on this platform here. Maybe it was a duplicate, but who cares? You still found it. Share that post that. Uh, so absolutely just Building hands-on, hands-on reflexes is, my opinion, is one of the best ways to learn. Now, of course, different people might have different ways that they learn best. Some people prefer reading. Some people people prefer watching videos. And so, try to find a, a training platform that offers you what you learn the best with. And it, like, for example, if they just offer videos but you prefer reading, then maybe that's not the training platform for you. It just totally depends on on who you are as a person and, and how you personally learn. I feel still people learn different ways, but I feel the best way to retain those skills is to actually be using them in a a real environment, even if it's a lab environment. It, you know, actually practice what you're doing. Um, I think it's it's the best way to retain that knowledge. Mm -hmm. Well, without so, a doubt. Yeah. Actually, Unless you're, you're constantly using it or, or rehashing those things. It's just it's going to eventually go away for sure. That's true, not with just cybersecurity, but I think that's true with anything in IT um, or really any skill that you're trying to learn is you need to constantly be using those skills and you know, build that kind of mes muscle memory in, in a sense. Um, otherwise, you're going to forget that exploit or forget that tool you can use and um, and so on. So um, Absolutely. And then one, one other quick tip on that front, something that, that works really, really well for me, and, and that's one of the other reasons I love teaching is because teaching actually teaches me more so than I knew before. What I mean by that is I may I may think I know a lot about cross-site scripting and I, I may have found issues in bug bounty programs, right? I may have that experience under my belt, but then teaching it, you start to realize, oh, I don't actually truly know how this works 100%. Like I, I know about it. I know how to find that. I know how this payload kind of works. But then when you try to explain it to somebody else, you realize, wait a minute, I don't know it as well as I thought I did. Now I have to go in and research this even further. And then, oh, it clicks. And now I'm able to, to teach it even better because now I truly, truly understand it. So I'm not saying everybody needs to be trainers, right? Not, not everybody needs to be a trainer. But what I'm saying is, as you're learning a topic, a great way to validate whether you truly understand it beyond just applying it hands-on is to try and teach it to somebody else. And literally, if you want to just stand in a mirror and teach it to yourself, you can do that. That's totally fine. Or maybe you want to teach it to your significant other or friend or whatever else, but try to, to teach the concepts that you've been learning. And that will help you reinforce what you've just learned, but also it'll help you find spots that you thought you understood, but you don't actually understand. So that, that's another tactic I would recommend. And that's why I feel like, you know, creating a blog, creating a YouTube channel or whatever, not only are you teaching it, but you're also documenting it for mm -hmm. those potential future job employers, you know, those future employers, you know, you, you know, you're teaching it and you're being validated by the community that you actually know your skills. And then also when you go to apply, you can link back to that blog mm -hmm. or YouTube channel and say, these, this is what I've done. This is how I did it, and these are the different skills I've you know learned throughout the way. And sometimes a lot of employers really, really value you know value that um, because they can kind of see your progression in your career and the different skills you've picked up. So it can drastically enhance your resume without a doubt. Everyone, this was such a fun interview to do, and make sure you tune back in Monday when we release part two and give away some more epic prizes from Cyber. So if you haven't already, make sure and subscribe. Thank you guys for tuning in. Until next time, keep learning.